watched your video of last year. Oh, nice. Oh, thank you. I see you're doing it again. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to today's video. Today we're heading over to Lakeville, Connecticut, which is an hour north of here. And uh, we're going to be doing the Lime Rock Park segment race. And it's going to be our last race of the year. So Lime Rock is about 56 miles with almost 4,000 feet of elevation gain. And because it's a segment race, um, there are going to be sections of the course where it will be timed, chip timed. I'm also pretty excited because initially I was going to do this race with my friend Sandy. Unfortunately, Sandy uh, is not able to, to do the event. So luckily, Jason found out last minute that he didn't have to work on the weekend. So he is going to race it with me. There are three courses that you can choose to do. Uh, there's the Epic course, which is over 60 miles. Uh, the Explorer course, which is what we're doing, which is the 56 miler one. And then there's the Adventure course, I think, which is the last, which is the, uh, the shortest course, which is about 24 miles. I'm looking forward to it. Last year, I wasn't really prepared because I wound up testing positive for COVID three weeks prior to, or four weeks prior to this event and uh, didn't really train for a few weeks after that. And so I w really wasn't um, as fit. So hopefully today I'll do a much better job out there. How do you think you'll do? Um, I'm hoping I'll, I'm hoping I'll do well. Um... You know, like Joy said, this is our last event of the year, and um, I wasn't expecting to do it. I, for the last several years, I've always had to work this whole weekend, both Saturday and Sunday. So I was pretty sure when Joy signed up for this earlier this year, I was pretty sure I would have to work today. But fortunately, I uh, they changed the schedule, and I, I don't have to. So I, I have like a a bonus ride uh, event today that um you know i wasn't ex i didn't think i was going to be able to do but i'm thrilled that i that i can do it and get looking forward to getting out there one more time and uh you know seeing what i have left in the legs um i'm kind of ready for an off season it's been a long year of doing events for us and you know training for these events so i'm I'm pretty much ready to to wrap it up for the season, but it'll be nice to go out there with hopefully a, a final bang or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the fact that there's only three segments, you know, that's that's good. I can just, you know, kind of go hard for those um, those few miles and then, you know, take some recovery in between. So, yeah, it should be fun out there. Thoughts? You guys probably heard some of the burps. Uh, any thoughts, buddy? What's your plan? A seep? I actually got a seep. The day at the event, we had nice fall weather. It was a bit chilly, but also partly sunny, and the temperature under the sun wasn't too bad, with a few layers of clothing. Lime Rock Park is a little over an hour from where we live, and with a 9.30 start time, we had enough time to drive there without having to wake up super early, which was nice and helped to keep us relaxed before we started. Of perfection, trust the simple Lime Rock Park is located in the town of Lakeville, Connecticut. 
This is an iconic racetrack, often dubbed the Road Racing Center of the East, has etched its mark in the hearts of racing enthusiasts since its inception in 1957. Okay, just warming up for Lime Rock. This is a cool event because it starts at the at the racetrack here, at Lime Rock Racetrack. But Lime Rock Park is more than just a racetrack for motorsports culture. The facility will host the second annual Lime Rock Park Epic, a gravel segment race that features three courses of varying distances that meander through the towns of Sharon and Kent, to name a few. Or my leg warmers, but I think I'm going to keep them on because. Today, we will be doing the Explorer course, which is 56 miles with over 4,000 feet of gain. This is the second year I attempt this race. Last year, I had just recovered from COVID and did very little training leading up to it. But this year, with a number of events and races under my belt, I had a sense of confidence that I could do well on the segments. I registered for the Lime Rock Epic less than a week before the event because I didn't expect to be able to do it. In the past few years, I've had to work that weekend, but thanks to a change in work schedule this year, I realized shortly before the event that I actually would be able to do it. When I delivered the good news to Joy, she and I were equally excited to be able to ride one more event together before winding down our season. Joy had done the Lime Rock event in 2022, and she told me good things about it, so I was thrilled to be joining her for it this year. I registered for the same route that Joy did, the Explorer 56-mile route, which had three timed segments. I did not do any specific training for Lime Rock since it was a last-minute entry, so my plan was to just go out there and have fun. I still intended to race the segments, but I didn't have any expectations and didn't put any pressure on myself. This was going to be a bonus ride. Although the route as a whole consisted of both paved and dirt roads, all of the time segments were exclusively on dirt. You know, you know, most of us, 
on your left. Forgot to have the freaking lap on. I was planning on using the lap screen on my Wahoo to track how much distance I had covered during each segment, but of course I forgot to hit the lap button at the start of segment one, so I just had to guess how much longer I had to go. This made it a little difficult to pace myself, but I just decided to go above threshold and push it for as long as I could, or until the segment ended, whichever came first. Doing an extended effort above threshold and chilly temperature was an odd sensation for me as I'm not used to the cold yet. The effort felt hard on my lungs, but my heart rate wasn't that high and my legs were moving pretty well. Fortunately, the segment ended right around the same time I started running out of gas. My time for the segment was 10 minutes and 11 seconds with average power of 270 watts or 277 normalized. A solid effort for me and I was encouraged to see what I could do on the next two segments. The first segment is 2.1 miles. It starts off with easy rollers with some wet sand and puddles. Then we make a left turn up Wildcat Hollow Road, which is another mile with a max grade of 9%. On your left. Thank you.
Well, guys, I don't know how I did in that segment because I had set up my lap screen a certain way last night and for some reason it restarted on me. I was frustrated with this first segment because I had set up my Wahoo screen to display average power, current lap distance, and current lap time. However, when I hit the lap button after passing the segment start sign, it reverted back to its default screen. Luckily, I've been working on riding by feel and did not let this get in my head. Shortly after the first segment, we rode through the Twin Lakes area, which brought back fond memories of our tour of Connecticut in 2022. These were the same roads that we started out on for day two of our journey during that trip. And the Fondo format of the Lime Rock event allowed us to be somewhat relaxed and riding at a comfortable pace in between the time segments. So we were soaking up the scenery whenever possible as we rode along. Go, go, go. Thank you. To recover from the effort, I pedaled an easy zone two power, allowing the group I was with to overtake me. This was the plan. Recover at zone two power until the second segment. Now, I have, but you haven't last year. After passing between the lakes, the route looped around Washini Lake to the northwest and back down south towards Sharon, which is where we would take on segment two. All of the segments and aid stations were well spaced apart from each other, which was good because we had plenty of recovery between the segments and the aid stations were conveniently placed around the same points of the route where we needed to refill water bottles. What's that? I think I took a long time to stop and pee. Oh. The second segment was almost 30 miles into the ride on Westwoods One Road, which as the name implies is one of two roads named Westwoods that connect to each other. The Westwoods segment is a staircase climb of about 2.8 miles. We're very familiar with this one because we've ridden Westwoods One Road on several of our gravel rides in the Kent, Sharon, Connecticut area. One of our recent rides in mid-September, about three weeks before Lime Rock, I had done an effort on the Westwoods One Road Strava segment, which is slightly longer than the segment we were doing for Lime Rock. So I had a good idea of what kind of power I could hold for that climb, and my goal was to go a little bit harder than I did on my previous effort. My legs felt good again on this segment, but now that I was warmed up, I didn't have the same burning sensation in my lungs that I had on segment one. This time I remembered to hit the lap button at the beginning, so between that and being familiar with the road, 
I was able to gauge my progress and my effort level effectively. I finished the segment in 15 minutes and 21 seconds with average power of 268 watts or 270 normalized. This was my best effort of the day and as a bonus it also got me a new PR on the Strava segment that I had PR'd a few weeks earlier. One unfortunate side note that I have to mention here is that shortly after the segment ended, I had a minor crash. I was looking for a sign that said the segment had ended and I didn't see one, so I kept going hard. Fortunately, it wasn't a hard impact and I didn't injure myself. I was just a little shaken up. My leg warmers and long sleeves prevented me from getting any cuts or road rash. I only had a few scrapes on my left knee, hip, and elbow. I took a minute to gather myself, then proceeded to ride up Westwoods 2 with joy. Segment 2 is approximately 2.8 miles with 3.7% average grade. The climb is a stair step that pitches up, then descends, and repeats this two or three times. I had fixed my lap screen at the first aid station, so this time I had the proper metrics to look at. Thank you. 
A woman shot up from behind me, but I fought the urge to keep up with her. I let her go for a bit, but kept my eyes on her, always keeping her in my sight. You're right. Oh. Car back. <clears throat> I noticed my breathing was controlled, but the effort was slightly hard. More people passed me, but I kept my pace, always looking down at my Wahoo to check the distance. At around mile two, I started to close in on others who were ahead of me. Still, I kept my eyes on them, maintaining my pace. As soon as the gradient eased, they began to slow down, and that was when I geared up to a harder gear and pushed on. Sorry. Oh. Well, guys, just recovering from the second segment in more ways than one. Uh, I feel fine after the effort, but I uh, I took a spill at the end of it. We we're making a left-hand turn on t to uh, from Westwoods One rode onto Westwoods 2 and 
I, I was looking for the white sign that said, I was looking for a white sign that said segment ending, and I saw a white sign. Uh, Car back. Car back. I saw a white sign right where, right where the road turned, and so I thought I had to cross that line. But then I, when I got closer to it, I noticed it just said that there's a route split. There wasn't actually a sign for the segment ending, so I uh, probably hit the brakes too too much to make the turn, and I slid out kind of skidded across the road a little bit. Um, but I think I'm fine. I mean, I think I might just have like some minor scrapes underneath my kit. But the uh, kit didn't get torn. And uh, good thing I'm wearing leg warmers and long sleeves because I would have had probably cuts on my arm and leg if I, if I didn't, if I wasn't wearing those. River Road is a gently rolling dirt road alongside the Housatonic River. This is another road that we experienced on our tour of Connecticut last year. The segment was about three miles long, and I figured if I put out similar power to the first two segments, I should finish this one in less than 10 minutes. I expected River Road to be wide open at this point and thought I would be able to time trial it at a steady pace. But there were a few other riders and a fair amount of potholes, which made it more difficult to pass another rider. And a couple of times I had to slow down and wait for the road to open up before making my move. I also forgot that there were a few railroad track crossings along the road, and although I didn't have to stop at them, I did choose to slow down while going over the tracks to avoid puncturing a tire. So ultimately, I feel like I didn't ride as hard or fast on River Road as I wanted to, but it was still a solid effort. Ah. Oh.
I finished the segment in 8 minutes and 50 seconds with an average power of 261 watts or 264 normalized. The last segment is three miles and relatively flat with some rollers. The first section of the dirt was hard packed at the center with loose sand along the edges. I felt it was only fair not to draft behind Jason because I wanted to set my own pace and possibly be in contention for a win, knowing I did it all on my own. So Jason rode off from me. At this point, my legs began to feel fatigued. In addition, it was windy all day with gusts up to 20 miles per hour. And because the road runs along the Housatonic River, there were some exposed sections which made it even harder to pedal. On training rides, I often practiced being as arrow as my body allowed me to. That meant either riding in the drops or elbows bent at 90 degrees and my head down. I utilized the skill on this segment to get as much relief from the headwind as possible and to go as fast as possible with minimal work. Clear. After finishing the third and final time segment, we were only about four miles away from Lime Rock Park, and we enjoyed each other's company over these last few miles as we chatted about how the day went. We arrived back at Lime Rock Park and did a lap around the racetrack. Oh my gosh. You have to ride through that thing for your I didn't realize it. Oh. Yeah, so you have to go this way, reverse. In the wind. Into the wind. Although our legs were tired, we wanted to finish our season in style. So we rode around the track at a tempo pace, then sprinted toward the finish line. You want to sprint? You want to sprint? I'll eat it out.
It was a pitiful sprint, but it's all in good fun. And a fun day it was. After bringing our bikes back to the car and changing clothes, we enjoyed a delicious outdoor lunch, then waited for the race results to be announced. Joy was using Strava to check her segment results and estimate where she might have placed among her competitors. Thank you so much. I was curious to see where I'd place, estimating myself to be around third place, but I wasn't 100% that my calculations were correct. They called up awards for the top three on the epic route of both men and women, then the explorer route. But when they announced the winner of the women's open competition for the explorer route, they called Joy's name. We were both surprised and excited and didn't quite know how to react. All right. On the day of the event, I didn't bother to check my race results. I wasn't expecting much because every other race I had done, I placed in the bottom half of the field. So I assumed the same would be true here at Lime Rock. And to some extent, it didn't matter to me where I placed on the segment race because the fact that I was even able to ride this event was a bonus. The race results were posted online and a few days after the event, I checked them out. I was shocked to find out that I had actually come in fourth place out of 53 in the men's open competition for the, the Explorer route. I'd like to take a moment to thank the organizers and volunteers of the Lime Rock Park Epic event. You all provided us and many of our fellow cyclists with the opportunity to have a fun, memorable day on the bike. The venue is unique, the route is scenic and challenging, and the food and support are excellent. And the segment race adds another exciting dynamic into an already fun event. We really liked having the chip timing for the segment race as it provided accurate and quick results. And the registration price was very reasonable given everything that's included. It's hard to find a better value for a cycling event in Connecticut. We would encourage anyone who lives near Connecticut and enjoys fall gravel riding to consider joining us at the Lime Rock Park Epic in the future. We definitely plan on coming back. And for our viewers who can't make it out to this event, we thank you for watching our videos and we hope you are enjoying your own rides wherever they are. Mm -hmm.